hello, Dr. Newsom here, and today we're doing a Q&A session. We have a few different uh, questions that have been submitted, and we're going to dive right in here. So our first question is from Alyssa. Okay, Alyssa, thank you, by the way. Our question is, why are probiotics important? Well, first off, I want to give you a concept, okay? Uh, your skin sloughs off. And there's billions of skin cells die every day, right? And they have to be replenished, right? They have to grow back. Otherwise, you have empty spots on your skin, right? Same thing with all the cells in your body. Your cells die off on a daily basis. Some cells only live for a few hours even. Other cells last for a while, but some cells die off real quick. And your microbiome is made up of trillions and trillions and trillions of microbes, which die off on a daily basis and they have to be replenished, okay? And if they aren't replenished quickly enough by growing in the microbiome, okay, because they grow in, in the microbiome, if they aren't replenished quick enough, you end up deficient. Therefore, you have to replenish them supplementally some other way. Okay, um, microbes in our gut, probiotics in our gut are so important because of the different things they do. Um, they extract nutrients, okay, from the food that we eat. They assist in absorption of all of our food. They work in every level of digestion in our gut. Okay, so this is all very important to our nutrition, right? Um, but they also, they also communicate with our immune system and act as a alarm mechanism, okay? They tell the immune system what's coming down the pike, okay? What are they dealing with? What's in the food? What's in the air? What's in, you know, what's in the environment? What are we dealing with? Are there other bugs coming into the system and so on and so forth? So they act as a, an alarm system to the immune system telling the immune system, they, 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 they transfer intelligence off to the immune system about incoming threats. Another huge thing that probiotics do is <laughs> they control inflammation in our gut, okay? By controlling inflammation in our gut, they prevent us from developing leaky gut. So if you have leaky gut, you have to get more probiotics into your system so that they can get that inflammation under control so that that can heal, okay? Super, super important. And remember that probiotics play a huge role in our absorption in nutrients. So if you're deficient in probiotics, you will be deficient in nutrients. If you don't have a good mix of probiotics in your gut, uh, you're going to have a real hard time absorbing anything. So probiotics are super, super important. Okay, so our next question is from Beth. Thank you, Beth. Um, and this is, what is, what's the deal with eczema? What is eczema? Well, eczema is inflammation in the skin, all right? Um, from a natural medicine, naturopathic standpoint, what eczema is, is when toxins in the lymphatic system aren't draining out of the body properly, they're not getting into the filtration systems, the kidneys and liver, right? Um, properly, the body will force those toxins out through the skin. When that happens, it triggers an inflammatory response in the skin itself, okay? Um, this can be triggered by all kinds of different toxins, okay? And it can be one toxin one day and a different toxin the next day even, okay? So it's, it's, it's not so much just toxicity, it's the ability to detox, which is super important. We'll get to that in just a minute, but it could be one toxin causing eczema one time and another toxin causing it another time. Same thing with foods is it could be a food allergy to milk one day and then that goes away and it could be lima beans the next day. It's, I mean, it can be totally different and it depends on how well your body detoxes. Okay, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Another big, big thing that triggers eczema is parasites. 
okay? And it's not necessarily the infection of the parasites, it's the waste the parasites produce. That toxic waste, you know, they eat and then they do what you do after you eat, you know what I'm saying? So it's that waste that they produce that triggers massive inflammation in our system and it clogs up our detox pathways, okay? So parasites are another big trigger for eczema. Another thing is candida. Candida overgrowth also produces a lot of waste, a lot of toxic waste that if you're not detoxing very well, it clogs up your detox pathways and you end up with eczema. You know, you get the skin inflammation. So basically in a nutshell, what to do about eczema is to detox frequently do things to reduce inflammation overall, the, over amount, all, the overall amount of inflammation in your system, and, and get those probiotics and digestive enzymes into your system. That's, in a nutshell, what to do for eczema. Okay, so number three is a question from Teresa, and this is my favorite question. Doc, what is the best diet? Oh my goodness, what's the best diet? And you're gonna love my answer. It depends on the person. Oh boy, right? Terrible, terrible answer, right? Well, that's the truth. The truth is it depends on the person because what is one man's medicine is another man's poison, okay? One person may do great eating an apple, whereas another person does great eating a carrot. But if the one that eats the carrot goes and eats the apple, they get sick. And if the one that eats the apple goes and eats the carrot, they get sick, okay? So <laughs> what is the best diet is completely individual, okay? It depends on you. So we gotta look at food sensitivities. We have to test for food sensitivities. You can talk to your doctor, you can talk to your functional medicine, naturopathic medicine, chiropractor, you know, these, these types of folks can test you for food sensitivities. Number one, that's super important. Now, we run into a problem. Here's something I see all the time. We have people test for food sensitivities and nothing comes back. <laughs> Although they have terrible time with just about anything they eat. Okay, it seems like they're reacting to everything, despite the fact they're eating a very clean, very good diet. They're still reacting to everything. And we test them for food sensitivities and nothing shows up. And they go, oh, doc, what the heck, right? Well, here's the thing. When your microbiome is poisoned, it almost doesn't matter what you eat. You're going to react. It's, it's going to be Russian roulette. It's going to be very haphazard. You might react to one thing today and not tomorrow. Or last week, something almost put you in the hospital. This week, you could eat it all day long. Okay? That happens when the microbiome is poisoned. Things like glyphosate poison the microbiome. Glyphosate's a universal an antibiotic, okay? It kills microbes. And in our gut, when it kills those microbes, those microbes die because they eat the glyphosate, okay? Then the microbes underneath those that are coming up, growing in the microbiome, eat the microbes that died because that's what they do, and then they get poisoned and it becomes a perpetual poison and you just get poisoned and poisoned and you stay poisoned. Your gut doesn't work well because it's poisoned, okay? And glyphosate's only one of the poisons that we're, we're you know, in contact with pretty often, okay? 70% of the water in the, in the world has glyphosate in it, okay? So it's everywhere. Therefore, you may need to look at a glyphosate test Get tested. If you're eating a very wonderful, good, organic, whole food diet and you're still sick as a dog all the time, test, get tested for glyphosate. There's also, um, there's also an environmental toxin test that you can do. You can talk to, your, talk to your doctor, talk to your functional medicine doctor, talk to your chiropractor, naturopath. They can get these types of tests. Have these done and see whether or not you're toxic or poisoned with some sort of environmental chemical because they can be in that gut triggering these terrible reactions, perpetuating leaky gut, causing all kinds of problems, okay? Once you find that out, there are things you can do. Now, 
in my autoimmune recovery course, I lay out multiple diets that I use with my patients. Okay, one of them is my UNO diet. Okay, and you can find more information. I'm not gonna explain all that here. Um, but my UNO diet, you can find in my autoimmune recovery course. Um, my leaky gut recovery diet is in there. And I also have my microbiome fortification diet in there, okay? If you want good information on how to eat clean, healthy food, my book, Detox for Life, has all kinds of information on that. We have 50 different recipes in there. Okay, so in both of those programs, we have multiple recipes and we, we can show you how to, how to do this, okay? But you gotta know whether you're having food allergies or if you're, you've been poisoned, okay? So if, if, you're, if you're reacting to food, that's important to know. That we can, there's ways to deal with that. If you've been poisoned, that's also important to know. And there's ways to deal with that, okay? So either way, don't lose hope because both of those situations can be remedied. Okay, so what about the people that do the food allergy test and they come back allergic to everything? Okay, they, they can't eat anything, right? Uh, I see that all the time too. Remember that that is an inflammatory response from your immune system, okay? So these foods, everything's triggering an inflammatory response. That, that means your immune system is in full-blown inflammation. It has it's a full-on inflammatory response. And it, celery can trigger that, okay? Something as benign as that, right? Or an apple, or, okay? Things super healthy and, you know, super chill, right? Those things can even trigger in a, a, an inflammatory response, an allergy, quote unquote, okay? If your immune system is on, you know, full on alarm, level five alarm. So what you have to do with this is one, you have to use enzymes, 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 antioxidants, things that are gonna reduce inflammation in your body. You gotta use enzymes so that the enzymes digest your food for you, okay? So just some basic little things. There's all kinds of things. And this actually is addressed in my autoimmune recovery course. So, Okay, so number four is from Susan. And this question is a, a two-question question, all right? First is, she would like to know what, uh, whether minerals are important or not, and what to, is the best thing to do for the immune system. Okay, so question number one. Are minerals important? Yes, minerals are super important, okay? Minerals make up components of every cell in our body. We have fats, proteins, and minerals. That's what our cells are made of, okay? Um, think of a, the most common bolt in your car. If your car was deficient in that bolt and it didn't have any of those bolts, how many systems in your car would, could that theoretically apply? effect, right? Everything, right? So if you're missing magnesium or you're missing zinc or selenium or calcium, any of these minerals, okay, it causes problems in every system in your body, okay? Calcium doesn't just work in your bones. Magnesium doesn't just work in your muscles, okay? There's, there's, zinc isn't just in your immune system, okay? They're in all of our cells. We need minerals. They're super important. One of the things that Linus Pauling told us, okay, that he's a scientist that made vitamin C popular. He told us that you can trace every disease back to a mineral deficiency. Okay, so minerals are super important. Uh, the second aspect of this question, what's the best thing you can do for your immune system? Is it vitamin D3? Is it vitamin C? Is it one thing? Is it another thing? The best thing you can do for your immune system is heal your gut. If your gut is a mess, your immune system will be a mess, period. End of discussion, all right? You have to heal the gut in order to heal the immune system. Um, the immune system actually gets trained in your gut. You can see that in one of my other videos. And so if your gut's a mess, the immune system's gonna get misprogrammed. Okay, so number five, we got a question from Gazelle. 
it is, I've been suffering from acid reflux. What should I do? Okay, well, acid reflux is a gas problem, okay? It is a problem with the food in the stomach fermenting and causing gas, causing gas to escape up into the esophagus. Okay, that's reflux. The reason this happens is because the food in the stomach isn't digesting fast enough. The reason that's happening is because the stomach isn't producing enough acid. If the stomach doesn't produce enough acid, uh, things are going to digest very slowly in the stomach, okay? And because the stomach actually has to lower the pH to a certain level before it can empty into the small intestine, okay? So the longer that that takes, okay, the slower the stomach produces acid, the more likely the food is to just ferment and putrefy in the stomach, and that produces reflux, okay? So what to do about that? Uh, personally, in my line of products, my, what I would do if I had reflux, I would use my equalizer concentrate, I would use my Newsom's Digest, I would use my gut health with meals. Anytime I ate, I would be taking those three supplements. Um, between meals, I would use my black brew. Those are the things I would do personally if I had acid reflux. I hope you learned something today. I love answering health questions. So I'm here to help you achieve optimal health naturally. So keep those questions coming. Until then, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.